Right. So this story really does underline just how much credibility the US and the Biden administration have lost, are losing their clout on the global stage over what is going on in the Middle East, and that this is extending beyond that region. It's becoming a global issue for America, because for as much as the US are getting rinsed for basically being Israel's biggest cheerleaders, they're still going around acting like they are the planet police for peace and prosperity, despite actually being the leading cause of anything but. And to that end, they've been given short shrift in no uncertain terms in Africa, of all places, for trying to lay down the law to one nation there as to who they can and cannot do deals with themselves. Well, with the US arming Israel and keeping the genocide in Gaza going, these Africans are having none of it, and they've just thrown the United States Army out of their country, out on their ear. But to listen to mainstream sources, well, you'd think it was all Russia's fault. Right, so the United States are getting chucked out of a West African nation, and the way most media are telling it, it's all down to Russian interference. But if you listen to what the actual government concerned have to say, they, well, they tell a slightly different story. We are in Niger. You don't hear much about Niger in the news, do you? But the US have given them major beef, and they aren't having a bar of it anymore. Following on from the events of 9-11, there was, of course, the war on terror, pursuing Bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, which rose to prominence following the deposition of Saddam Hussein in Iraq, then ISIL. But later on, after they were largely routed in the Middle East, they found strongholds in northern and western Africa. The removal of Gaddafi in Libya, for example, led to a power vacuum there, which terrorist elements soon filled. But equally, the instability in many West African nations enabled them to take root there too. And so by 2013, the US established a deployment of troops, around 100 of them to start with, but this has since grown to nearly a thousand in Niger in order to deal with ISIL and Al-Qaeda groups that were terrorizing the region and were basing themselves out of a region called the Sahel, which is like a belt across North Africa, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean in the west all the way to the Red Sea in the east. And it's basically the boundary between the Sahara Desert and green, more tropical equatorial regions of Africa further south. So cooperation to eliminate terrorist threats in Niger by terrorist groups displaced from the Middle East who had spread there, well, this should have been a win-win situation for both, really, shouldn't it? Niger had US troops on, a, on hand to help deal with these groups who were killing their people now, and the US had a base from which to conduct further missions to deal with these groups in Africa for good. Okay, fine, as long as that is actually what happens. Well, the accusation now is that it hasn't. But the US have not dealt with these groups properly, adequately, despite all the time they've been there, yet maintained their presence in Niger without living up to their side of the bargain. You can understand how the Nigerians might be a bit aggrieved about that. Now, despite the US presence, and what hasn't helped the US position certainly, is the fact that they apparently were sat on their hands whilst a military coup literally took place in Niger last year, which deposed the socialist and first ever Arab leader of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum, I dare say the ousting of a socialist wasn't something the US and their government were going to cry much over. So you might ponder to yourself if they chose to let this happen, or were they just slacking off so much they really just didn't notice. Whatever the truth of the matter, things have blown up in their faces now because of it, or in no small part because of it. As the military takeover and the self-proclaimed president of the National Council for the Safeguard of the Homeland, bit of a mouthful, Abdurrahmane, Chiani, I've butchered that name, haven't I? At this point, the US appeared to notice something had changed. Didn't it seem like the idea of a military takeover? They don't have a long history of being good news, not to mention there's nothing democratic really about them, of course, and chose to freeze security support and their counter-terrorism activities. The new Nigerian administration then decided to cut off all diplomatic ties in response to the US, and then come last month with US troops still in Niger, Niger demanded all US troops leave the country now as well. Throw them all out. And if the mainstream are to be believed when they're reporting on this story, they're now going to be replaced by Russia. A Putin plot, no doubt. There's a lot more to do with the fact that the US had withdrawn their security and counterterrorism duties. Basically, they went on strike for the very reason they were in their country, yet still chose to remain in the country and thought, well, we're allowed to be here. They won't throw us out. They won't stop us, surely despite that literally being the reason you were allowed to stay. So why should you be surprised you're now being told, get out? That is the extent of most mainstream coverage of why Niger are throwing out the US. But it isn't all of it. Certainly isn't the whole story. Despite essentially squatting in their country at this point, the Biden administration were 
still trying to dictate who the new administration of Niger could open up diplomatic ties with. We've seen this before. The US saying, well, if you talk to them, I won't be your best friend anymore. It's playground stuff. But when Niger are getting no benefit from you being in their country, from being their friend anymore, and you're telling them who they can be friends with instead, well, it isn't going to wash, is it? But it isn't Russia that are the issue here. Not exclusively, anyway. It isn't Russia the US have apparently been warning Niger off over in and of themselves. That's just a very convenient narrative for the media to cover to set the tone and get people thinking in a certain way. Because it is very easy, very popular to hate Russia, hate Putin. But when the truth drags us back to the Middle East again, all of a sudden it becomes much less clear cut. You see, it isn't just Niger talking to Russia that has given Biden and co so much consternation. It is because Niger is talking to Iran as well. Amazing that so many media outlets can mention Russia, but not Iran. Iran, of course, are opposed to Israel. They're also on good terms with Russia, it should be said. Not least because they are aiding, for example, the Houthis in Yemen and their blockade of the Red Sea. But, of course, Israel attacked their embassy in Syria and retaliation was meted out by them not all that long ago. The US were up in the sky shooting down their drones and missiles flying through Iraqi airspace. Uh, UK aircraft were involved in that as well. All coming to Israel's aid, as they were, Israel's allies. Niger are not pro-Israel. They had bilateral relations up until 2002 with them, but they were never strong ones, and then they were terminated completely. Because Niger has for a very long time viewed Israel and Palestine in exactly the same light as apartheid South Africa. They've known for the last 20 years, and they've believed it for far longer than that, what's slowly starting to dawn on a lot more people in the West now. Uh, Niger, for example, voted yes in the famous 1975 UN resolution, which determined that Zionism is a form of racism, and their views since have not shifted. Now it seems allying themselves with a more proactive opponent of the Zionist regime really does have the US in a flap. But the United States support for Israel, given what has happened for the last seven months, well, I wouldn't want you on my doorstep either, really. Here's an excerpt from Iranian media outlet Press TV. The reason I've used that is because they quote an article from the Washington Post. However, the US outlet, of course, was one that omitted to mention Iran at all. Niger's Prime Minister says the termination of military cooperation and bilateral relations between his country and the United States was due to American threats and Washington's opposition to the African nation's partnership with Iran and Russia. Ali Mahaman Lamin Zin told the Washington Post in an interview published on Tuesday that the US had tried to dictate what countries Nyame, the Nigerian capital, can have close relations with and had not just justified its military presence in the West African country. Underlining the US failure to combat terrorism in Niger and the Sahel region for a decade, Zin said, The Americans stayed on our soil doing nothing while the terrorists killed people and burnt towns. It is not a sign of friendship to come on our soil but let the terrorists attack us. Zin said the United States' tone and behaviour towards Nigerian officials were the primary reason for the broken relations. The Nigerian Prime Minister criticised US officials' calls on Nyame not to engage closely with Iran and Russia as they were two of Washington's adversaries. Zin said he had been given an ultimatum by the US administration to have security with Washington or be close to Tehran and Moscow. If you go off with Russia and Iran, we can't be friends anymore threaten the US. And Niger basically said, well, go on then. It's like Nelson Mandela once said, one of the mistakes which some political analysts make is to think that their enemies should be our enemies. And it just goes to show how US influence is waning. It's one more in a growing list of examples of the US being on the wrong side of global consensus right now, and again showing that actually more and more countries are growing not just fed up with them, but no longer fearing them either. The US failed to do what was asked of them. They had a position in West Africa, no doubt, for their own ends as well. Israel is their foothold in the Middle East and why they are so devoted for them. And it is for that reason. But with Niger having this ongoing issue with national security amidst remnants of Al-Qaeda and ISIL still apparently being active because the US didn't do the job they promised, yet are still arrogant and entitled enough to try to dictate domestic policy to them when in their country. Well, that's not just make you much of a friend, that makes you more of a bully. This appears to be the position of the Nigerian government right now. This is the point they've reached, and the US are being thrown out over it. And frankly, with their immovable attitude, as it seems, regarding Russia, uh, regarding Israel even, regarding uh, Iran and 
Russia, and by all means this isn't a video extolling the virtues of those countries either. There absolutely are plenty of reasons, lots of reasons, to criticise both Russia and Iran. But however, no matter which way you choose to look at this, the US have again only got themselves to blame for what has happened to them in Niger. And you've got to wonder, well, who is it going to be next? How many more diplomatic car crashes are there going to be because they are siding with Israel above all else? Because fundamentally, this fallout, this cut off of diplomatic ties and military ties now all comes down to the US placing their Israel relationship above their relationships with other countries. So they really shouldn't be surprised that these other countries, who are clearly seen as less important and now know it, are walking away and making friends with other people. And yet, despite attacking Iran and Niger, considering entering into diplomatic talks with the theocracy, the US has actually been begging them again for a favour, Iran. And again, it all comes down to helping Israel, even as the genocide rolls on. The brass neck of them is absolutely crazy. But you can find out all about that story in this video recommendation here, and I will hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.